Okay, before I start my next video, I just wanted to share this with you. Uh, a customer and a friend of Very Super Cool Tools, Gary Mitchell, out in Salinas, California, uh, made a sign for us, and it is very well done. Uh, it's a raised panel with a raised lettering of our logo uh, with the background of the American flag. And then right here in fine letter, it says made in, in the USA. So uh, very well done. I've got it probably hanging on my the back wall of my shop here. So uh, thank you very much, Gary, and uh, uh, nice work. Very very nice. And good luck in your in your business. I I believe Gary is trying to start a sign making business, and this is if this is any indication of the work he do, he does. Why? You'll be successful at it. All right, on to the on to or, or back to my project, I should say. Okay, <clears throat> I made a template for myself since I have to make four of these cutouts uh, in the plywood bottom. They are 18 by five, and uh, I just need to locate them. Uh, this one's going to be located probably a little bit more this way. Maybe somewhere in here about a foot from the end. And then every uh, four feet about on center with that one on the end also being four, four feet from the end or one foot from the end. And then I'll kind of split the difference and I believe it's going to be about four feet between each of the other two. And these holes that I'm cutting are for the uh, climate adjusters, they call them. And you can you can look them up on the internet. But I'll have uh, I'm having some made for me by uh, my my friend at TEC Industrial, Jim Perry. And uh, once I get those made, I'll show you what they look like. But you have to have uh, access to the to the shuffle board itself from the bottom. And that's what this hole gives you is that access. So I'm going to lay out those and I'm also going to lay out for screw holes to uh, glue and attach the bottom to these cross members, which I'm going to do first. I'll cut these out in place uh, after the glue dries. Uh, I think that'll be the easiest thing to do or the easiest way to do it. I'll, I'll check that out for sure, I guess, before I do it. But um, what I'm going to do is uh, locate one screw, you know, about four inches from each edge and one in the middle. And all that it does for me is it's going to give me a, uh, use, you know, to use it as a clamp to pull this down into the glue, into the cross members and keep this surface flat. So the, the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to take my pencil and let me show you here if I can from this side. So you can see these ribs here. Let's see. Drop this down a little bit. So I have my ribs. All I'm going to do is take my pencil and run it along each side of the rib, uh, making a mark on the bottom side, and then I'll drill from that side. From, from the bottom side, I'll drill a hole up through a little pilot hole, probably an uh, eighth inch or smaller even. Uh, drill my countersink from the top side, and then uh, drill my, my through hole so that I know that I'm going to be perfectly centered on these ribs. And uh, got a lot of holes to drill. Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. About 50 holes that I've got to that I got to drill and mark for. So, kind of tedious work, but it's something that has to be done. So I'll get to it right now.
Okay, you can see the lines here. I've got uh, one on each side of the rib and it's exactly where that rib is located. I've also marked the top side so that I know that this side goes to this outside wall of my uh, frame. And then down here you can see as well the cavity I was talking about right here. Let's see if I can show that to you better here. That I that I have to fill with a, a filler block to take up that space. I, I'm not going to fill the whole thing. I'll probably make uh, uh, depending upon the bolt pattern. I got to look in my directions to see which kind of bolt pattern they're using. I think it's just a triangular pattern, but I'll put that block where it needs to be so that I don't uh, when I pull those bolts through or down into that plywood I don't um, put any stress on that or pull through it when I'm tightening up those bolts. So I got the other side marked the same as this with the lines um, so that that's, that one also is ready to go and I'm just gonna set them up on top here and drill pilot holes like like I said here, here, and here. Run, run them all the way up to the same on the other on the other piece and uh, come through from the other side.
checking to make sure I got all the through, all the holes went through, and they did. Let's move on to the next piece here. as a backer board so I don't drill into my top here. Alright you kind of you get the idea what I'm doing here and I'll uh, after I get done I'm gonna flip them over drill the uh, Craig screws. They got a flat head on them. Square drive. And uh, they're self tapping, that's what I like. So I'm going to drill a through hole so that it doesn't hold in the plywood. And then I'll use a Forstner bit to drill it deep enough for that countersink so that it's below the surface. I'll show you what it looks like when I get done. Okay, I got my uh, Forstner bit. Uh, what I'm going to do here is just stick it in that pile hole, obviously. And I've got it marked on with the black marker there, so that as it goes in, that's the depth I want. I'm going to just drill to the depth of the uh, of the marker. So we'll see how that goes here. Doesn't take too long. That should do it. All right, back to the music. And uh, anytime you're doing this tedious work, it's nice to have some music going in the background. Missed one here. I'm gonna have to flip that over and drill that pilot hole through. And 
these will pull down a little bit too as you uh, tighten them up. through holes. I'm gonna throw some blocks underneath there for this operation so that I just space it up a little bit. That's how that's going to work. Little to no blow out there, so that's good. battery. 